This is something that I have been halfway kind of studying. The homeless problem. And what I have seen is the number of people who are homeless has dramatically increased. Let's go ahead and talk about Sandy Springs. I lived there 13 years and I saw two homeless people. That was it. And during the pandemic, I started to see more and more homeless people. We went from two to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 100 people. And I mean, they were, some of them were characters. Like this one dude would be laying in a ditch like this, just chilling. And I started to see these people who had their hangouts where they would consistently be. And that was just Sandy Springs. Then I moved to Buckhead. That is a whole new homeless problem. And I feel that the homeless problem is going to dramatically increase. And I'm going to tell you why. Go to YouTube and look up the number of people who quit their job, didn't have a, a big savings account, didn't have a plan. These people were just sick and tired of their job. They're like, I'm going to quit my job and then whatever happens will happen. And this right here is going to be one of the reasons because right now there's someone out there in the YouTube world, TikTok world, Instagram world, and they're going to put up a post talking about, I quit my job today, and they're going to get all kind of rah-rah and cheers, and you quit your job, and you're moving on, you can't do with this, you can't deal with this stuff, right? And they're going to have all of these people who are going to be clapping and essentially cheering them on for quitting their job and they're going to read the reviews because essentially every time you see one of these videos i quit i quit my job people talking about mental health and these other things and they're going to get a lot of attention they're going to get a lot of views and then three four five months later reality hits i don't have a job car gets repossessed Next thing you know, they go to the door, there's an eviction notice. And now all of a sudden they don't have a car, they've got an eviction notice. Now they're scrambling to try to find a job and they don't find a job before they get evicted. Then they rely on friends and family and people to help them. And th this is something else too. Um, when you're staying with someone as a person of impoverished means like if you got it going on and you want to stay with your boy let's say you got the job you're making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and you can work remote and you want to go hang out with your boy in the philippines thailand it's a good time no one gets tired of you when you have money and the ability to do things it's like it's half the time what's up dude what's up what's up but when you're impoverished that clock starts ticking. You only have so much time to get your act together and get out. Because uh, someone's gonna say something to you. It's like, hey, you know, I was here for you, but bro, it's time to go. And this is something else. These people know you don't have no money, know you don't have a car, know you don't have a job, but you gotta go. And this is one of the things that I have personally experience when your life is on the odds when you when you just not really doing well uh, people just don't have that um, they don't really care about you and this is something you will see and this is something you would feel because essentially with all of these people who are becoming homeless 
they're gonna turn to friends and family first and that's gonna work out for a hot minute and then next thing you know they're gonna be on the streets like go downtown Atlanta when you're going under 20 and look up at all these tents and you you go you're seeing there are more and more tents there are more and more homeless people there are more and more people who are living this life and it's going to grow it's going to explode because once again going back to the pandemic everyone got what i would consider a mental health break they didn't have to worry about work they didn't have to worry about evictions they didn't have to worry about foreclosures they didn't have to worry about their car getting repossessed they didn't have to worry about bad credit cards they got a break from real life and they didn't get a break for a week or a month or two they got a break for close to two years and now this is why i feel that there are so many people who will come on the internet talking about i quit my job i don't have a lot of savings i don't have a plan i'm about to see what's going to happen because they had that break and once again luxuries once tasted become necessities so now these people are looking for that break but big daddy government is not doling out that money anymore there's no more ppp loans there's no more edl loans there's, there's none of that there's no more enhanced unemployment there's no more direct stimulus payments there's none of that right so now you have Americans dealing with the real economy. And this is why the homeless problem is about to get epidemic. And I'm not talking about, because once again, I have witnessed this in my neighborhoods. We went from 30 to 60 to 100 people. Literally, I would go to some of my places to do shopping and this is gonna be the middle of the day, and there's a homeless person camping out right there next to the store. And I go in the store, and, oh, that's Hal. They already know him, he has a name, he's been communicating with people. Yet this guy is sleeping in the middle of the day by the store. This is one of the things that you're gonna consistently see as we descend into this episode of rapid homelessness um, it's not going to get any better and I'm gonna tell you why it's not going to get better first of all when the people come to TikTok, what do they do they come to get attention they don't come to solve a problem they come to get attention the people who want to solve their financial problems they're doing DoorDash they're getting extra jobs, they're working hard, they're getting two full-time jobs. They're, they're not on TikTok, they're out actually solving their problems. But we have a lot of people who want to come to TikTok to complain, to actually, you know, th this was funny, when they made the video leaving Buckhead, someone's like, stop complaining, just move. And I'm just sitting there like, dude, you, and this is something else that's funny. If you're gonna make a comment and I don't answer because that meant that your comments answer was in the video. That meant that you didn't watch the whole video. So why would, why would I waste my time with someone who doesn't want to watch the whole video? And one of the things that's getting to be really interesting because there's a lot of people that answered that video who live in the city who've experienced the same thing. And this is one of the reasons that the homelessness problem is going to escapade. Because whenever I'm driving and I come on an overpass or something and there's a person there with a sign, they're like saying they're ex-vet or homeless or something, and they're just literally on the side of the road begging for change or begging for money. I've noticed there are way more people doing that. And this is just another insight, another clue to the number of people who will be homeless going forward. And one of the things that I look at, for the most part, 
I would say most homeless people are pretty non-harmful. They're not out to do anything, they're not out to rob. That's gonna change. Because as the number of homelessness started to increase, there's videos on here, I think it's Keystone Avenue in Philadelphia. Just go where the hookers and the drugs are in Philadelphia, and there's literally people driving around this neighborhood and there's all kinds of people who are drug addicted, they're homeless, who are just on the streets. And this is what's gonna to happen to cities. Um, and this is gonna to happen to cities. The homeless problem is gonna dramatically increase and it's gonna to happen to the neighborhoods that are close to the city. Because these people can get around, they can go from Atlanta to Buckhead, from Buckhead to Sandy Springs, from Sandy Springs to Brookhaven and you know from Sandy Springs to Roswell because there's transportation they're connected and once again now I was in Roswell the other day and I didn't see the homeless person so the further out you get the harder it is for the homelessness people to get to your city to get to where you are and that's kind of the ticket you want to get far away from the city so you don't be exposed to the city problems. And I to purposely picked an area where public transportation doesn't run. And one of the things that you will see as we go on, and this is, I'm predicting this is going to happen in the next 24 months where we're going to have this massive wave of homelessness. We're going to have this serious, serious situation of people who are in harm's way, who are literally out there just having a certain situation because first of all, and I'm gonna do a totally separate video talking about van life because that's a whole different topic, but I'll say that for the van life video because this video is about homelessness and the people who will end up homeless. And, you know, many, many years ago, I found myself in a very bad situation where I was living in my car and then I wrecked my car and then I found the, a boarding house and I was living in this room for almost three years. And it was crazy. Let me go ahead and tell you what happens when your economy drops. One evening, I was sitting outside, it was, um, August, just sitting there enjoying the breeze. And this girl is walking down the street and she's walking kind of funny. And I noticed the closer she gets that she has a gun and she's walking down the street and she's just pow, walk, walk, pow. And I just got very quiet because I didn't want to startle her. And then she went around the corner walking, drug induced state, shooting a gun in the ground and this was happening in broad daylight. And this is one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to find people who are not used to that behavior be exposed to it because they get thrown into homelessness. And it's going to be crazy. It's going to be really, really crazy what's going to happen and what's going to um, break down, what's going to be happening as people are forced into homelessness and they're having to endure homelessness and they have to, it's like, I think years ago when it happened to me and I remember one night and it was winter and I turned the car on, let the heater run, then I would turn the car off, then I would turn the car on and it was about 3.30 in the morning and I was just sitting there like, what did I do to deserve this? That was my question. What did I do to deserve to be sitting in my car, 3.30 in the morning, freezing, turning my car on? Also, because I had, I had a job, but I think I had like 20 bucks in my pocket and I was about four or five days away from getting paid. And that $20 had to last me until I got my paycheck. 
And I was just sitting there and, you know, it's, it's a very damning feeling. It's really, really messed up. And what we're going to have are a lot of people who are going to be going through these feelings, through these situations, who are going to be um, just doing these things because as the economy melts down, and this is something that I have been watching, I've been looking at real estate, and this is what's funny. Million dollar properties will come on the market Sunday, be under contract by Friday. But properties way below that, they're sitting on the market longer and longer and longer. And also with the rental market, because that's something I'll, I'll be checking for failed Airbnbs, these fully furnished houses that with an, ex, with an extraordinary rental price, seven thousand eight thousand nine thousand ten thousand dollars a month for a regular ass house and i've been looking and the rentals are sitting on the market much longer than they used to because uh, there was this one house it was um what i consider the failed airbnb fully furnished and you can get in there for 7,500 bucks per month, right? And it's just a regular house in a regular neighborhood, nothing extraordinary, nothing special about it. And that house has been sitting empty for going on six months. I've been tracking this house for six months and there's something interesting because other houses, the prices are coming down and coming down. I'm seeing houses with two and three and four price drops. But for some reason, they feel they didn't get $7,500 for this house, which tells me that they have flimsy financing and they need that money. They need that money because a lot of people who got into the Airbnb space went out and borrowed a lot of money to get these Airbnb properties and the economy is, st is starting to tank and they're getting caught with these properties and it is not turning out in the manner that they fully expect it. And this is just going to contribute because there are going to be homeless people, but guess what? There's empty apartments like my, my old place. When I got my rental renewal, it was $500 a month less than what I was currently paying, which tells me a lot. If they're going to send me a renewal, that's $500 less because when I did renew it, it only went up 250 and then they were like now nah, it's going to be 500 dollars less that tells me with the evictions that they did the massive level of evictions that this seriously opened up the door for people to um they they need renters they need renters so there's apartments to rent there are houses to rent and the rental market is completely out of alignment with what people could afford. And this is something that's going to correct itself in the next 24 months, because here's the thing. A lot of these people who have these rental properties, they owe money on these properties. So they got to get some money coming in. And this is something that's going to happen. And I know a lot of the real estate people are getting ready to scream, but you're going to have people who will have maybe a mortgage of maybe 3,600 and they're going to put a renter in there for twenty eight hundred or twenty nine hundred because it's better to pay that five or six hundred than to pay that whole thirty six hundred. And this is one of the things that's going to happen because the housing market is completely out of alignment with reality and the regular income of regular people It's completely out of whack because once again, big daddy government. And his big daddy government was shelling out that money and everybody thought they were rich. And this is one of the reasons that repossessions are at an all time high. This is one of the reasons that people are getting evicted because you had people who got used to that government money. And there are people, and I'm, I'm gonna say this, and this is gonna be really bold. There are people who are gonna fall into homelessness who don't actually have to fall into homelessness, but because they want to come here online and talk about how hard it is versus seeking a solution, 
They're just going to wake up one day. The car is going to be gone. Eviction notice is going to be on the door. Sheriff's going to put them out and they're going to be on the streets and they're going to be sitting there like, how come someone didn't come save me? Because there's a lot of people who are looking for Jesus, looking for the, you know, wh whoever can come out and help them out and save them. Ain't nobody coming. No one's coming. And one of the things that's going to happen is people are going to find themselves in a very tender, sensitive, crazy spot because they're looking for someone to come save them and there's no one that's coming to save them. And this is why the homeless problem is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, you know, it's going to be crazy in the cities. I mean, you're going to be in the city and you're not going to be a homeless person. You're going to be trying to do some shopping and you're literally going to be stepping over homeless people to get to wherever you want to go because it's going to get that bad. And if you don't believe me, go here on YouTube and look at the homeless problem in California and California has had such a problem that they have task force that they have literally changed the laws and started to move the homeless people to certain areas and get them out of certain areas. And this is going to be uh, uh, duplicated with other cities because other cities are going to start having homeless problem. Homelessness in Arizona is very high. Homelessness in New York City has always been high and it's going to get higher and higher and higher. And you're going to have more people who are going to become homeless. You're going to have more people out here struggling. You're going to have more people who are going to be out here dealing with the disposition of being homeless because unless you get on that DoorDash in that seven days a week, which a lot of the people are going to really be working these gig jobs really, really hard. But the homeless problem is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. I'm just here to tell you.